hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, if you're coming here to see the new Yule Phone Armor 26 Ultra Walkie Talkie Edition and you're not a regular viewer of my channel, then welcome. I'm Matt and this channel is all about software defined radio and ham radio. Now, the reason for featuring an Android based phone on this channel is that this phone has an inbuilt DMR and FM 5 watt transceiver. Not only is it DMR, it also supports dual slot DMR, meaning it's compatible with ham radio DMR repeaters that use two time slots. If you're a regular here, then welcome back. And if you're only interested in seeing the DMR and FM transceiver feature, then feel free to skip to that chapter. Chapters will be available in the video description. So let's first check what we get in the box. And although this can be a boring segment, don't worry, we'll super speed this part. Now packaging is pretty nice and this top little box we'll check in a moment, but let's get the phone out first. Now the first thing I notice is that this thing is pretty darn heavy, especially compared to my iPhone. So it looks like we get a pretty hefty USB cable, which presumably is used to charge and connect the phone to a computer or a charger. Now we do get this 120 watt super fast mains charger. Now these things really do help charge in the phone in a reasonable amount of time, definitely faster than charging from your computer's USB port, for example. Now we also get a little SIM removal tool and in the box we also get a lanyard or wrist strap, whatever you want to call it. Now the little box doesn't really contain anything interesting apart from a couple of user's manual for the phone and the walkie talkie app. However, you do get a tempered glass screen protector, which is quite a nice touch and it's definitely worth applying. As this is the walkie talkie version of the Your Phone Armor 26 Ultra, two antennas are included in the box. Now, the longer antenna is to be used when you operate on a VHF frequency, and then the shorter antenna is to be used when you're using a UHF frequency. Now, more on this topic later in the video. However, my first thoughts is why not just include a dual band antenna? Okay, so let's take a look at the phone itself. And first, we need to remove this protective film that it ships with. The screen will also have a film on it that you obviously need to remove before you use it. Now, first impressions is that this thing is actually built like a tank. It's solid metal sides and nicely designed and flush feature buttons. So down the right side of the phone, we have this red SOS button. Then there is a power key stroke fingerprint sensor. And then just above this, we have the volume up and down buttons. And on the bottom, we have a microphone, a 3.5 millimeter headphone socket, and a Type-C charging port. Down the left side, we have the SIM card slot, and in the same compartment, you can also install a micro SD card. The gold or yellow key here is a user customizable button. However, this walkie talkie version, this acts as a PTT button. Now what appears to be an accessory port is found lower down, but I cannot seem to locate any further information on this currently. Now on the top, the antenna socket is actually covered by a rubber flap. And there's also a second microphone on the top along with an IR blaster, which essentially is an infrared LED transmitter. Now on the rear, we have the cameras and a speaker. Now camera wise, there's actually four cameras and I'll show you some sample footage in a moment, but there's a 200 megapixel main camera. There's also a 64 megapixel night vision camera. An ultra wide macro camera is also available, which is 50 megapixel. And then there's a 76 millimeter 3.2 times telephoto lens, which unfortunately is only eight megapixel. The rear speaker, which is in the middle of those four cameras is what your phone calls a thunder speaker capable of delivering up to three watts or 121 dB of loudness. And while I cannot really demonstrate this on camera, it does sound very, very good, either for music or for any of the ham radio applications. Now, I just want to say a massive thank you to today's video sponsor, JLC PCB. Now, if you're not sure who JLC PCB are, well, they're a one-stop electronics and mechanical manufacturing platform who provide exceptional quality services at a fraction of the price you'd pay elsewhere. Their services include manufacturing of PCBs from your designs to PCB assembly, 3D printing, CNC machining, and mechatronic part manufacturing. Now, part of amateur radio is experimenting 
And sometimes we need to create our own circuits using electronic design software of your choice. You can create your Gerber files and upload them directly to the JLC PCB website with a click of a button. Simply choose your materials and board specifications and then place the order. Your new PCB prototype will be in your hand within just a few days. JLC PCB makes the whole process from design to manufacturing extremely simple and you can get high quality PCB prototypes for just $2. In fact, if you sign up using my link, which is in the description of this video, you'll also get $80 worth of coupons that you can use on your order. Thanks again to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Before we turn it on, let's just quickly go over the specifications. Now, I won't dwell on this too much as I'm sure you can go ahead and read the specifications online yourself, but it does have a huge 15,600 milliamp hour mega battery, as they call it, which according to their specifications, will last 1,750 hours on standby and 56 hours of talk time. The screen is a FHD plus 120 hertz 6.78 inch screen and actually the screen is really good in real life. Understandably it also has an IP68 and an IP69K rating which I think is a given considering the build quality of this phone. Also it can withstand a depth of 2 meters in the water for up to 30 minutes. Now the transceiver part of the phone can output 4 watts and that's on FM and DMR and DMR is the digital mode. The GPU is an ARM Mali G77MC9 and the CPU is a MediaTek OctaCore with 5G and 8 cores at 2.6 GHz. 12 GB of RAM can also be up to 24 GB within setting as virtual RAM and the standard flash storage capacity is 512 GB, upgradable to 2 TB when using a micro SD card. Of course, this phone also has a camera. Now, while you'll probably not win any awards with the photo and video quality, it does have a 200 megapixel camera. Night vision, time lapse, and macro is also supported within the camera application. Now, still, macro photos are semi okay. 4K video recording is sharp, but to me, the colors look a little bit washed, and unfortunately, the maximum frame rate at any resolution is only 30 FPS. Now, I would have liked to have seen at least 60 FPS. Maybe that would have brought it in line with other devices like this. Now, night vision works really well, although not the sharpest of images. This does appear to work OK. Now, this little sample clip, I was in my garage here and it was completely pitch black. I could only see what was around me through the phone screen. The great thing about having a radio transceiver built into an Android phone is that you can also use lots of other ham radio related applications. Now a few of them I've gathered into this little folder and a popular app is called Echolink. Now Echolink has been around for many, many years and it's a way of connecting analog repeaters to each other over the internet. The Echolink client application allows the user to tap into these Echolink links and talk through them using your phone. Of course, you do need a ham radio license and call sign to be able to register for this application. Now, the speaker on the rear of this Yule Phone Armor 26 Ultra makes that received audio sound super nice. Welcome to the Echo Link test server. This server records your transmissions and plays them back to help you adjust your transmitted and received audio. Please feel free to connect as often as you like. Another really cool app and is a must have for any ham radio operator is called Repeater Book. Now this app works worldwide and if you allow the app to know your device's location, it will list all of the ham radio repeaters in your area, starting with the nearest first. You can find out the receive and transmit frequency of that repeater, along with any required CTCSS tones and if it's digital, then any color codes or time slots. Another application called Droidstar is another internet based application that allows you to connect to a wide range of ham radio reflectors. Now, this supports lots of popular digital modes like DMR, Fusion, D Star, all from this little one application. Okay, so the main application, which comes pre installed, which allows you to use the walkie talkie feature of this phone, is called Prize Interphone. Now, it's a bit of a strange name, but the app works and it works really well. 
When you first power on the app, you'll get a familiar sounding startup tone, especially if you've had other DMR radios in the past. The first thing you want to do is program your required channels. You can do this by going to the channel list and selecting an existing channel and then just press edit. Now here you'll be able to give the channel a name, set the receive and transmit frequency. Now if this is a digital memory, i.e. it uses a DMR, then you'll need to ensure that you have the correct time slot selected along with the correct color code and any contact stroke group number or reflector. You can have more channels than what's already there as default and you just press that plus button on the top right and you'll need to choose whether it's a digital or FM contact. Strangely enough, if you've got a digital channel in the memory, you can't actually change that back to analog. You either have to delete it or create a new one if you want to have a brand new analog FM channel. Now I have a DMR repeater quite close to me, GB7AV, and GB7AV is a DMR repeater. It also has an echo reflector set up where I can transmit to the repeater on a specific talk group, 9990 to be precise, and then the repeater will play back my audio over RF, kind of like a test to ensure my audio sounds okay. This is uh, M0DQW, just testing the GB7AV echo test via DMR uh, from the Yule Phone 26 Ultra Walkie Talkie Edition. It's M0DQW, over. This is uh, M0DQW, just testing the Yule Phone 26 Echo test fine. A nice integration is with an All Star node. Now, All Star is similar to Echo Link, and if you have an All Star node, you can configure an analog channel within the Prize Intercom app so it's on the same frequency as your All Star node. Now, using an app called Node Remote for All Star, which incidentally is an app that I made myself quite some time ago, and it's for Android and iOS, you can have the Node Remote app running in the foreground and control your node like this. If you want to talk through your node, you just press the PTT button on the side of the phone. Now this will then send your transmitted audio via RF to your node using that Prize Intercom app, which is actually running in the background. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Playback. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Now with the included app, which is the official app for controlling this phone's radio transceiver, there are some limitations. Well, not limitations, but some things are missing that we're used to seeing on other DMR radios. Now the app is actually quite basic and it has massive potential. One of the features that's missing is showing the user's DMR ID when you're receiving a digital transmission. This also means that no call sign is shown. Other features like a direct link into repeater book or its own repeater linking would actually be awesome. Now I did reach out to your phone to find out if there was an SDK to communicate with the radio board, but nothing as of yet. I think if enough of us spam your phone with feature requests, we could actually end up with a really good application that could have lots of benefits and features for the ham radio community. Now one last quick app to show is SDR++. Now this application runs super smooth on this device and with an RTL SDR V4 plugged into the USB-C port that's on the bottom of the phone, I can receive the HF band like this. Of course, I do have an HF wire antenna plugged into the RTL SDR and typically HF conditions are pretty dire at the moment, but you get the point of what it can do. Now, as you can see, SDR++ works super smooth, navigating around the screen and just generally using the application. I think this Android device is definitely going to be my portable comms mobile device. And with a data SIM card or even a regular phone SIM card, I'll be able to use it literally anywhere. Now as a bonus and a hint of a future video, there appears to be a new network radio application which is rapidly growing and that's a virtual amateur app which looks like this. Dual VFO and each channel is actually a frequency so it's like a virtual walkie talkie but using technology the same as Zello. It has some really nice features and it makes it feel like you're using a real radio. Now it appears to be fully compatible with the Yule Phone Armour 26 Ultra, 
And again, it sounds really nice coming from that large rear speaker. Now this application is called Link Poon and it actually comes as part of an installation on the N58 Plus from TalkPod. However, there is actually an APK available online that you can download and pretty much use it on any Android device. Now there's a couple of versions of this Your Phone Armor 26 Ultra available online. Now I'll leave a link in the video's description along with a couple of discount codes so you can save yourself some money if you want to get one. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you in the next one.